Hello everyone. I am back with another lesson. I Yangchen Lamu once again welcome you for another online class on English literature and the topic of my lesson is a brief explanation of A Sleep in the Valley written by Arthur Ball. Okay, before I start with my lesson, let me repeat the drill. Reading of the textbook is mandatory. This video is not a substitute for your main textbook. If you haven't read the book or the poem, please read it and then watch the video. Okay. Now I'll start with the poet Arthur Rimbaud and the background of the sleep in the valley then boil down my topic to the main topic that is a brief explanation of a sleep in the valley then get down to themes and give you some sample questions and the summary link. Okay now talking about the poet Arthur Rimbaud his full name is Jean Nicolas Arthur Rimbaud, a French poet. He was also by profession a trader and a modernist. Modernist, he played a very significant role in the modern literature movement and he was also a surrealist. Surrealist or surrealism is a very important movement in English literature. But the main concept of the surrealism was to bring on the surface the unconscious mind, the unconscious thought that you know moves into your head so the main purpose of this movement was to get the unconscious thought that is running in the head on the surface for instance now if you see the modern art okay or the modern painting what what will you see at first glance you will just see uh, splashes of painting uh, mixtures of color does it make sense at one glance no, it does not make sense. So, surrealism is one such concept, okay, to bring that unconscious confusion, unconscious thought that is running in the mind on the surface, which does not make rational sense, is one such concept. And this concept actually influenced, you know, writers, artisans, or many other people, and therefore became an important concept in a modern literature. Okay, next. Um, Talking about his style, Victor Hugo, another important writer, even called him as an infant Shakespeare, a baby Shakespeare. Victor, uh, sorry, Arthur Rimbaud started writing at the age of 15. He was an excellent student of literature and therefore, in fact, was regarded as an infant Shakespeare. He influenced the writers, artists, musicians like Pablo Picasso, Bob Dylan, and Allen Ginsberg. Some of his important works are To Music and Evening Prayer. Next, now let me give you a detailed background or a small peep into the you know background of Sleep in the Valley. Now the original title of the poem was Le de Mort du Val, okay, the, that meaning the sleeper of the valley. Okay, and its English title was Asleep in the Valley. It was published in a collection called Anthology Le Maire in 1888. And it was written in 1870 during the Franco-Prussian War. Okay, now this is very important because, um, you know, the writer witnessed this Franco-Persian War and as a repercussion or as a result of which he wrote this poem called Asleep in a Valley. This poem is fashioned upon sonnet. Okay. Now, coming, coming to my main topic, that is a brief explanation of a sleep in the valley. Let me read the poem first. A small green valley where a slow stream flows and leaves long strands of silver on the bright grass. From the mountain top stream the sun's rays. They fill the hollow full of light. So what do you see? The poet is giving the description of a green valley where the silver stream is slowly flowing. Okay, and there on top of the mountain or above the mountain, there is a resplendent sun beautifully shining and radiating its rays and keeping the entire valley warm, isn't it? So in this, you know, in this uh, quatrain, he gives a description of a bountiful nature, rich description of a beautiful nature and the tone is that of happy. 
you know happy tone okay so another then another technically technically speaking here in this quatrain he has used a um, technique or poetic device called alliteration now what is an alliteration alliteration is an occurrence of same sounds of same letters adjacently or in close quarters meaning now let me read the first line a small green valley where a slow stream flows and leaves long strands of silver on the bright grass so can you see the rhythm here now the word small the sound small okay matches with the sound valley similarly here the sound green matches with the, another word that is stream right slow flow can you see the similarity in the sound the occurrence of the same letter of the same sound so this technique like flow slow you know green um, you know stream small valley or uh, repetition of green a sound slow flow law sound so the repetition of same letter sound in in a, you know in a close adjacent way in a close quarters is known as alliteration so what does it do it gives melody it gives rhythm it gives sound a beautiful sound to a poem so in order to make that you know in order to give a rhythm to the poem okay he has used the technique called alliteration okay so coming back to the quatrain what what does the first quatrain explains or highlights it gives you the beautiful description of happy nature okay beautiful description of a sun and also that of a green valley where the silver stream is slowly flowing you know in the valley okay now slowly he discloses the secret what is the secret now the next quatrain now there comes a soldier very young lies open mouthed a pillow made of fern beneath his head asleep stretched in the heavy undergrowth pale in his warm green sun soaked bed now in the second quatrain he gives you uh, or the there's an appearance of a soldier description of a soldier who lies down on the grassland in the valley and his mouth is open and he's actually asleep on the ground on the grassland and his pillow pillow is made up of ferns ferns are kind of plants available on the grassland and his pillow is made up of that of ferns okay and he's asleep he's peacefully asleep on the grassland on the meadow stretched in the heavy undergrowth okay meaning that his legs are stretched okay enjoying he's happily enjoying relaxing on the ground with his mouth open and pale in his warm meaning his complexion is slightly pale because of the uh, you know reflection of the sun as a result of which his complexion has become pale and his green sun soaked bed meaning the grassland has absorbed the rays of the sun therefore it has become warm it has become sun soaked okay and the nature is cozily wrapping whom this new sun uh, this soldier in her lap and this soldier is happily enjoying his sleep okay so here you get the idea of a soldier who is enjoying his sleep on the grassland okay and he is just enjoying the cozy warm atmosphere of sun and here i have highlighted sun soaked meaning this is another example of uh, alliteration so so repetition of which sound so so sun soaked okay next now in the next set state he gives you <clears throat> his feet among the flowers he sleeps his smile is like that like an infant's gentle without guile ah oh, nature keep him warm he may catch cold okay so slowly you're plunging into the narrator or the poet is giving you the description about the soldier okay a minute description of a soldier what is he doing his feet among the flowers his his feet uh, are stretched okay his legs are stretched and it is among the flowers okay it is covered by all the flowers and he sleeps okay previously also he mentioned that he is peacefully sleeping okay 
sleeping sorry and he smiled now what kind of smile this soldier have okay he has a beautiful infant smile innocent smile there are various kinds of smile okay there are some tricky smile or there are some grins that suspicious grins that people give okay with different meaning but here the poet is trying to tell you the soldier's smile is that of a baby a very innocent smile without guile meaning without any you know tricks uh, you know trickery or you know any negative intention okay and ah oh, nature keep him warm he may catch cold so now here the poet is addressing a nature okay pleading or requesting nature to keep whom you know the soldier warm and cozy because he might catch cold okay so the last line i have highlighted the last line because the poet has used a technique called apostrophe now what is apostrophe apostrophe is a figure of speech used to address an inanimate object or an abstract quality now here poet is addressing whom he is addressing nature and nature is an abstract thing right i mean to say inanimate object okay but now here the poet is addressing nature as a man it is like an act of personification he is addressing or considering nature to be a man and requesting nature to keep the soldier warm and cozy so in the set state in this you know set set you will understand that the poet is actually concerned about the soldier okay then the last set state the humming insects don't disturb his rest he sleeps in sunlight one hand on his breast at peace in his side there are two red holes now comes the real story or real surprise or the real shock okay the humming insects don't disturb his rest the insects that the, they are the, the insects that are hovering around moving around the you know the soldier do not disturb him any more why because most often when we are sleeping and the mosquitoes are buzzing here there we get disturbed right but here the poet is saying that the insects that hover around you know the soldier do not disturb him he sleeps in sunlight of course he is under the cozy light of sun one hand on his breast so now he is giving the description a kind of description how he is lying on the ground so one hand is on his breast on his chest okay and at peace so the soldier is sleeping peacefully with one hand on his uh, you know uh, breast or chest and he is not even bothered about the sounds of insects humming sounds of insects in his side there are two red holes so if you see just at the side and when you just move your eyes to the side of the soldier's body you would find two red holes okay and what is the indication of this two red holes it means or is suggestive of the fact that the soldier was shot by the two bullets and he was actually not sleeping but he was dead okay so the so the ironically ironically the poet or the soldier sorry the soldier was not sleeping but actually he was dead so if you go back to the first go back to the first quatrain you will understand the the opening of the poem is that of happiness right with the description of bountiful nature description of green valley and description of the radiant sun keeping the entire valley bright light happy cozy warm and then suddenly there is appearance of a soldier in the next quatrain who is lying on the ground or the grassland peacefully sleeping not getting affected by the humming sounds of insect his legs are stretched covered by the flowers not even bothered about anything happily enjoying sleep at peace and 
when you come to the last line there's a shock you will understand that the soldier was actually not sleeping but he was dead he was shot by the two bullets then there is a sudden change in the tone of the poem the poem that starts with happiness actually ends with a melancholic tone a tone of sadness and that of shock okay and here i have highlighted two red holes now he has the poet has used another poetic device called metonymy what is metonymy figure of speech by which the name or meaning of a thing is substituted by its attributes okay now in the last line the poet has not directly told you that the soldier was shot by bullets right he has just given you one hint that is or one attribution that is two red holes the moment you will read two red holes you will understand that it's it is suggestive of what it is suggestive of the fact that the soldier was shot by two bullets right similarly that figure of speech is known as the technique he is employed here in the you know poem is known as metonymy sometimes it's not necessary for the king or the monarch to address only as the king or a monarch you can as might as well call him as the crown so when you when you call the when you when you give the picture of a crown you will understand it it is who it is suggesting whom it is suggesting the king so this technique is known as metonymy okay uh, uh, coming back to and what kind of what kind of you know tone is used in this poem the poet has used slow of course slow because he slowly discloses he slowly discloses the you know surprise the shock right at, he does not reveal it at first he reveals at the end he firstly slowly gives you the bright picture of life then narrows down and boils down his topic and then tell you that at the end that the poet was uh, sorry the soldier was dead poignant but hopeful melancholic melancholic means sad poignant but hopeful means this is a tone of regret hopeful in hopeful because now the soldier is free from all his sufferings he has gone somewhere to the world where he is at peace that's why i've highlighted this word called peace okay because it's mentioned yes of course the news of the death of the soldier is not at all happy one but somewhere you know that the, now the soldier is free from all the pain and his suffering and is at peace and happily not happily but peacefully sleeping somewhere in heaven or in his world next now let's discuss about the themes or the ideas that the poet wanted to highlight in this um, poem okay sleep as death yes now here the poet has represented death as sleep okay now uh, it's actually you know he has used the term sleep for death if you ironically if you see the poet was not you know the so soldier was not sleeping he was actually you know dead so he has interchangeably used the term you know sleep to be as death okay next futility of war undercutting the beautiful scenario scenery that the poet has mentioned in the poem like the descriptions of greenery all that thing you will see on the other hand you will see the destruction wrought by war war is not the solution for anything or to make peace is what the to uh, poet is trying to tell you all okay now see the glory lies in life and not in death therefore the war is futile and mindless okay because at the end who's going to lose the soldier has lost his life okay somewhere here out a mother has lost her son sister has lost her brother a beloved has lost her lover friend has lost another friend and you know a wife has lost a husband children has lost a father 
there's always you know a devastation always a tragedy always a loss and many many in fact uncountable soldiers and officers have you know sacrificed their life for the sake of war and at the end this is nothing i mean the loss is irreplaceable it is it cannot be replaced it is irreplaceable therefore the poet is trying to highlight that the glory is not in war the glory is in living serving the nation serving the country while living you know with living and serving with honor so therefore he has written you know the futility trying to highlight you the futility of war because he himself has witnessed you know that franco prussian war and as a result of which he wrote this sonnet or this you know poem talking about the current scenario what happens as there's a tension built up between india and you know china and we recently lost 20 soldiers and a colonel there's several other attacks where we are not aware of and the many soldiers have sacrificed like considering pulwama attack or uri attack many of them are dying you know and at the end there's always a loss the loss of a person loss of another very gentleman man and these losses are irreplaceable the sacrifice they have made for the country or for the nation is like actually commendable but at the end if you see war is not a solution for peace so in this way he is trying to you know highlight the futility of war and if you go down and narrow the root cause of war is greed power and hatred or the power or the idea of dictatorship so if you have a sense of self control or if you understand or value the meaning of peace then definitely and if we say no to war definitely the world would be a better place to live in and a happy place for everyone but unfortunately sometimes we are too cruel human beings tend to be too cruel and they are forgetful of all these peace thing and just you know self centered towards the idea of power and greed and lust for all the you know dictatorship and all and as a result of which there's loss there's war and if war is inevitable death is also inevitable loss is inevitable you know if you go and see this um or read something about modern literature or the period after first world war you will understand the concepts of existential crisis and all these things have emerged as a result of war because people were not only physically but psychologically they were hampered and as a result of which they started questioning their existence so in a way if you look and study war was not at all a solution rather it was a cause for destruction and loss talking about covid-19 itself we are battling another war we are we are trying to save our lives therefore we are clustered in our respective homes this is another man made creation this is a man made destruction sometimes human beings tend to be too you know too genius to create its own destruction and therefore covid-19 is one of the such example for it so in a way man is only the creator of his own destruction who calls you know uncertain deaths unfortunate deaths he is the one who is actually creating all this devastating atmosphere and devastating loss so as a result of which there are some people who understood realized that killing murdering destruction war all these are not solution these are all futile and one such author or poet was you know author rambau who saw the loss the inhuman nature of war and therefore wrote this poem and tried to give you a message that war at the end is mindless is futile okay next is the beauty of life okay now amidst all the wrecks of war the poet appreciates the beauty of life as well therefore he has given you a wonderful description of nature at the first 
of the poem, a beginning of the poem. Okay, and then he realizes that no matter what, you have to embrace life and death. Yes, of course, death is inevitable. One day everyone has to die. But why to die early? Everyone is destined for everything. Everyone, if death is inevitable. But why are we calling our own death early? Uncertain deaths. It's all man-made, you know. So the poet is trying to tell you to embrace both life and death with peace. Appreciate the beauty of life because there's a glory in living and not exactly in dying. Okay. So the beauty of life is precious. Every life on earth is precious. So the central idea of the poem here is embrace life and death. Since the soldier was shot by two bullets, he was lying on the ground suffering, but then at the end he died. So in a way, poet was hopeful and he prayed to nature to keep him warm, to keep his body warm. And he's left us and gone to the world of peace where you can happily rest there. Okay. Uh, this is the summary link taken from internet. You can check it, take the important notes, make notes for yourself. Okay, there are several uh, links available on the internet. Please watch it or, you know, keep the important points ready for you all. Now, these are sample questions. Okay, first is a multiple choice question. Number one, Asleep in the Valley is a dash poem. It is a war poem, celebration poem, sad poem, a happy poem. It's a war poem okay the stream flows through the green valley flowers bushes river it's a green valley next saq short question and answer um how does the stream flow through the valley the stream flows slowly through the valley where does the slow stream flow the slow stream flows through the green valley what is the soldier's smile compared to? It is compared to infants, an infant's smile, okay? In his side, there's a line given, okay? In his side, there are two red holes, the last line of the poem. What do the two red holes depict? It depicts that the wound or, you know, it depicts that the soldier was shot by the two bullets, okay? How is the pity of war reflected in the line? Pity of war because... Pity of war is reflected to the uncertain and unfortunate death of the soldier. I'm sure he never, you know, he was willing to die. There was some sort of, you know, at the end, it was a kind of a compromise which he made. What are the themes suggest, suggested in the poem? You can go back to my previous slide and check the three themes which I've talked about, okay? In this way, I would like to end my class here. I will get back to you with another lesson. Till then, stay safe and thank you.